Hello again fellow collectors. We got a pretty cool one today. This is a chase version of this Ford GT Mark II from the 2019 Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. I am not French. This is the very first Zamac in my entire collection. I've been tempted by some others in the past, but I, well, passed on them. Anyways, uh, here's the back of the thing if that interests you. I'm gonna guess the regular white color version is set limited to 7200. I have no clue as to how many of these things there might be, the Zamac ones. If anyone knows, please leave a comment. And if anyone's curious, I overpaid for this. <laughs> I definitely paid more than probably what I see on online. I paid more than some online prices I've seen, so... But, uh... I got to inspect it, you know. I didn't buy this online. I bought it at one of my local dealers. And, uh, you know, when you're paying a lot of money, sometimes it's better to pay a little more knowing that it might be in better condition than something that might be broken, like, say, a green light or something in shipping. Okay, this is number 293, and that's probably the white version. This one, uh, you know, this has a sticker on it, though. I'm not sure if this sticker is a applies to the chase version or just the regular white version uh, I don't know or maybe because this is the left hand drive version hmm well that's nice uh, I, I don't know if there's a new trend in Mini GT but it's really great to have the name of the car on the side end so then you can stack these all up in the box and find the box instead of you know having to stack them up like this which is a little less user friendly when you collect a lot of things oh well this is interesting too it has a secondary better clamshell this one is just for side display this one actually covers the majority of the model all right great packaging all right so bearing in mind, you know, this is a chase version, of course it's not painted white, but I'm going to assume everything other than the actual color is identical to the regular version. So this is a picture, I believe, from Pebble Beach in 2019. This is supposedly the send-off edition of this car. Um, only, well, I, I read two articles on this, so I don't know what's right, you know, who writes these things on the internet. But I looked up a Ford GT Mark II, and supposedly only 45 were made, or are supposed to be made, track-only vehicles, and base price of $1.2 million, US that is, uh, 3.5 liter V6, making 710, well, 700 horsepower, and it's made it to a 7-speed transmission. Things rolling on 19-inch forged aluminum wheels. So that's what I learned. When I read a different article saying this send-off edition might be street legal, I don't know if that's the case. Maybe someone would leave a comment. To, you know, I'm sure other people might be curious about that, if these are street legal or not. All right. I guess we looked at that. I was just fixated on the dirtiness. Well, let's see what's going on. So we do have the raw die cast here, and it's... Well, let's see, the graphics, are they just tampos? Yes, this is why I like Mini GT, tampo printing. No weird decal action that I re that I can remember. Maybe they have done it, but I don't remember it. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm not holding against Mini GT, but, you know, there's a, a few scratches up in here. But down here, maybe there's a water stain here or something. But a lot, of, the majority of this metal looks pretty nice, I think. I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, I think you, a lot of you guys must probably have some Zamek Hot Wheels or something. Do they generally look nicer than this, the actual metal casting? Do they have little scratches and stuff like this? Or are they polished totally well? Like, I guess there's some, you know, roughness here. Uh, maybe some roughness here. Hmm, this side doesn't bother me at all. This side doesn't really bother me too much either. So, I don't know. As I say, this is my first AMAC, but I 
I actually looked at the white one and this one at the same store and held them next to each other. And uh, the white one's nice and all, but something about the color scheme of this gold and black on a chrome-like surface just yeah, it suckered me. It made me pay a premium for it. All right, so we went over the tampo prints. The wheels here, they look very nice. You know, nice thin spokes. There's air passing between the spokes. As you can see on the far side, some light getting through. Um, the mirrors, you know, they're rubbery. That's another great thing about Mini GT. So thin, so fragile, yet rubbery. So you don't have to fear dropping it too much. Although that's probably not something you want to start as a habit. Look how thin these wiper blades are molded. They're part of the window molding, but they're so thin. They're they look fantastic, and, you know, being painted black as well. I don't know about this white interior though. Uh, the real car looks like it has a black interior. That Pebble Beach photo. So I'm not sure why this is white. If they're trying to actually mimic an exact car that was that occurred in history, maybe the regular one has a white interior. Not sure. Anyways, a nice texture in here. Seems to be. Sounds like it's metal. Right part of the die cast. There's actually a tiny canard here. And that's molded into the casting, I think. It's quite thin, but naturally it doesn't stick out too much because, you know, the die cast would probably break if it stuck out too much. But that's pretty cool. I will say, though, the photograph has two canards if you want to be a nitpicker. Alright. There's some uh, texture up in here as well, after the radiator. Sounds like metal again. Although, uh, could be wrong. Maybe it's plastic. It has a high pitch to it, though. This is definitely by the, you know, die cast, but it is a, uh, it's not a print, it's a physical, you know, molding, so little ridges and stuff. Alright, uh, the door cut here, yeah, looks pretty nice, this side looks pretty nice. We get to the back here, we get a different angle. So, I forget, these are exhaust pipes maybe? Or a back? I think the other version I'm going to show later has something else here, but uh, we'll see. Oh, well, this is interesting. I'm going to do the flashlight. Way down above the diffuser, I can see some yellow. Hmm, sorry, that's probably too bright. Let's do one lumen. See? So, there's like two yellow pipes coming from the center, and they're going out to the sides. So are those, are those exhaust pipes leading to, I don't know, or are they coming from the side and going up to the middle, and those are exhaust pipes in the middle top there. Hmm. I forget, I can't remember everyone's comments, so I apologize for that. I can't even remember my own birthday sometimes. We got some fine uh, veins here, quite a few of them. This rear wing, very nicely done, pretty thin struts, yet, you know, the whole thing is pretty accurate looking, like it literally curves and yeah, very nice. And these side plates are quite long, much longer than the actual wing, so that's nice. On top of the engine we have a separate plastic piece with some uh, vent recesses I'm guessing, and then the scoop itself is sticking up, so that's neat. And does it actually go in? Let's see, let's pick here, uh, well... Not much, not much at all. But it's so dark, and there's actually a border on around that whole vent. It's quite realistic looking, I think. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's the best I can focus on it. But you can see there's a bottom edge, you know, and then in the middle. So I, I like it. The actual graphic of this red line is, it's not bad. Not a hundred percent, but it's not bad. It's pretty straight. All right. So yeah, as usual, it's weird for you know just to see all this white white space. Right? It's why they wouldn't just write Ford GT Mark II here is really strange. And then while they're at it, why not have a copyright date and stuff? You know, stuff for collectors to know in the future. In case they buy stuff used, which we often do. 
The slicks are a little questionable. Um, uh, the front slicks don't bother me, but I have a hard time thinking that these tires should be the same width. They look like they're the same width. I just don't think you'd have 700 horsepower running through tires this narrow in the back. So that, that seems kind of odd, actually. I guess they just didn't want to make uh, two molds for these wheels, which I can understand. So, in the grand scheme of things, you don't really look at the car upside down. So, if they had to, you know, skimp on the wheel width in the back in order to make everything out here look nice, I'm all for it. There's the construction of the inside. So yeah, this is strange to me. Why would they have a white interior like this? Um, yeah, even the engine is white. I guess it doesn't matter because you can't really see any of it through, through this top thing here. Racing seats. Oh, this thing's got one of those crazy, like, F1 style uh, steering wheels. All the buttons and gizmos. And this is a pretty interesting way to mimic a roll cage. You know, cut it off at the top. I think that's actually pretty smart. You know, CMs, the old brand that I love, they would actually have the horizontal, but it's, it'd usually be way too low because the, the plastic of the window is here, you know, so it's, I think this is smart, actually. Oh, I almost broke it. Okay. I took this apart because the, this car is so cool, I gotta add my own brakes to it. And, uh, let's just put that aside. Yeah, so that was metal, that front grille. This whole thing is... that's interesting. Oh, I'm mistaken. I think I'm wrong. As usual. I think these are little pegs for the grille. And so this grille is probably black plastic and these pegs are keeping it in place. Hmm. Alright. Well, obviously if you've seen this kind of this thing before, you can fast forward, but I'm going to pry these wheels apart, pop in some disc brakes with some school glue. I have some 3D printed brakes that I've made for my mini GTs. Man, this one's tight. Oh, this one has a knurling, that's why. Sometimes they're smooth, sometimes they're knurled. Let's see if this, uh, just have a cross drilled here. Cross drilled with the red, that's what I see in that Pebble Beach photo. Ah, coincidentally, this whole size works out well. I thought I was going to have to file it or a little bit more. It's going to be a tight fit, though. Get some tweezers while I'll push that down. No glue necessary, uh, since that one's a pretty tight fit. We have to have the opposing rotation on this side. If you twist it and put it on, it goes on a little bit better. That knurling has to like dig through the channels that it had before. sweeps. I see, it might be easier if I put this one in the interior first. Yeah, that seems right.
one screwdriver because uh, that electric drill will definitely strip out a zinc thread. Back it out till you find the thread. So, like most of our, pretty much all mini GTs, it does roll if that stuff fascinates you. But for me, I'm more about uh, the brakes. Naturally, they do roll with the wheels, but uh, let's get a little better light in there. Yeah, I think it's at least better than just having air there. So I guess it's time to look at a couple of their Fords. GTs. So the first Mini GT, Ford GT, <laughs> I got was the uh, regular street version, which my notes are saying this is like a 2016 uh, car. I did add some silver paint to those mirrors as well, and probably some brakes. Yeah, I have yellow calipers in that one. Actually, let me get a lower angle for you guys. And actually, let me slow this down because it's a little fast. Then the next one I got was this 2016 LMGTE winner. This uh, red, white, and blue guy. And I think, uh, yeah, this is a slightly different, you know, rendition because it has a different wing. A uh, much different engine scoop or engine cover. Actually, I think uh, the front vents are also different. So comparing the three, actually, if you look at the front radiator vents, this one is physically different, but these two have the same vent holes. Well, if we go to the back, these two have the diffusers, this one, uh, these two have exhaust coming out. I think it's this race car has some sort of restrictors, maybe? I forget, I apologize, but there's something else going on in those holes in the back. Um, I do believe I may have repainted this interior blue. So that's the way it looks the way it does. But I don't think I messed with the race car one because that thing probably has a black interior. Alright, I'm trying to see if there's any other differences. Well, naturally the race cars have really big uh, chin spoilers. The road car does not. Hmm. Here's one last car I should probably get up there. It's the granddaddy. This Kyosho GT40. And uh, let's see if I took any notes on this. In 1966, this came in third place at the 24 Hours of Le Mans or Le Mans as I like to say it. Alright, so that's my Ford GT collection as of now. And uh, I don't know if, unless, I don't know if I'm going to get any more. I do like this car and all, but I try to, try to stick to one casting of each, you know, I don't have that much room. So I guess that's enough for the talking. Let's get one last spin. In summary, as usual, Mini GT doing a fantastic job. Uh, tampo printing, that's what everyone should be doing. Um, Hot Wheels does it. Hot Wheels are dirt cheap. Mini GTs are not dirt cheap, but they do it. So it's just really strange to see all those expensive brands using decals. Uh, this thing rolls. I know a lot of you guys are into that. I didn't even talk about the headlights on this, but there are some clear lenses over those headlights and there's a lot of like black printing inside those light buckets. So that's pretty good detail there. You can add some silver paint to the mirrors here with like a Molotow paint pen. A one millimeter Molotow paint pen is what I use. Or you could probably just use a Sharpie. Alright, so yeah, fantastic. I will definitely continue getting some more mini GTs, and uh, I guess I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching today.